on today's podcast, we have Julia Moore. Hello. Julia, how would you describe yourself? Um, I am a freelance set dresser, props, um, and a jack of all trades when it comes to on-set production, I guess. Yeah. At this You've point. been a production assistant on TV shows. Yes. I saw that. Mm-hmm. TV shows, yeah. movies. I lived in uh, California and Hollywood for <coughs> oh, almost five years working in the industry and like just running that's great. More, more than a PA, though, too. You were, you were a set dresser. Yes. Well. Yeah. I had, yeah. I had two kind of paths going at once. Um, one led me into, like, PA and production assistant on a lot of, like, A-list kind of stuff and, like, TV shows, um, movies. And then the other uh, side was starting more in, like, the B-list kind of films as a set dresser and kind of working up the, the ladder there. So uh, I want to go back to films. Mm-hmm. I mean, that was, a, that was a great segue into it. <laughs> so you, you also have directed to some of your own projects, and you... Um, are a filmmaker. So mm-hmm. go back to that point where yeah. uh, that film that you were working on and what was that um, What was that film number one and then also how uh, how did you come to realize that you love set dressing so much? Yeah, yeah. So um, I went through the program at MassCom, like like many uh, many people here. MassCom mm-hmm. for life. <laughs> MassCom for a- life. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was actually my like senior kind of like project that I totally just like kind of took on my own, um, like wrote it, directed it, did pretty much like everything for it other than a, a few uh, positions I brought some other people on. And it was in that uh, short film that I realized what I was drawn to. At the end of the day, I was like, I love directing it. I could be a great first AD just yelling at people all the time. But really, <laughs> in retrospect, I was like, I loved the set design of it, the props, like really those kind of details and Interesting. Mm-hmm. So I worked on that project. And it's Tom Myriad. Yes. And Tom Doherty as well. Oh, Doherty. Okay. I was thinking of um Sakira. Sakira. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh. dang. <laughs> you got Tom on that. I, think I worked with him on, on stuff too, actually. Yeah. <laughs> but, oh, did you? We mm-hmm. just had him on the podcast. Oh, nice. Uh, I like that. Yeah. It's not released yet, but Yes. I mean Stay tuned. Yeah, Stay right. Tuned. I love <laughs> this. Great this is the, <laughs> this won't be either. By so. the time this is released, <laughs> it will have been released. <laughs> yeah, th- that was a fascinating conversation yeah. with him. What did you work on uh with Tom? So I actually I think I did some like interning for him before I moved to California. And then I ran into him when I was in uh, like a school program in Indiana that they had like it was so funny because I'm like (laughs) I went to Rock Valley and I basically learned everything I need to know. And then I went to a university in Indiana and it was like I didn't learn anything new <laughs> and like oh, really? they like brought out like Tom Sakura <laughs> and <laughs> I was Rockford. just like from yeah from <laughs> Rockford to be like the whole big production of this like little school in Indiana and I was like what is going on I could have got this <laughs> in Rockford just, yeah what am I paying <laughs> <Yeah>. for <laughs> wow interesting. wait so that was you knew Miles uh, oh Alan. yeah that's, that's how what, I heard yeah, about yeah, the school okay. actually it was through oh, Miles okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I mean it was cute, but I was just like, "This was a waste." So, you, wait, you went to a, in a school in Indiana? I did, yeah. As well, let's not talk about it. After, <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, not a great promo for them. <laughs> no, <laughs> unnamed school. Unnamed school. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. But I'm just kidding. you you met Miles through that school, or no, you met I'm him outside? Miles here. Okay, yeah, cool. yeah, he he loves it, the school. So and he recommended it, and it was okay. great. It was cute, but yeah. It was cute. My, Miles, Miles <laughs> That's what you want to hear. Cool, cool yes, dude, too. Love Miles. I ran him in, in LA, actually. We like hung out okay, a couple cool. times. And actor yep. from the Rockford area. Voice actor. Yeah. Voice actor. Okay. Kind of blew up on YouTube mm-hmm. with some great impersonations and stuff. Yeah. Like really good at impersonating. Is people. he still in LA? or He lives in LA. I think now. So, yeah, yeah, he's been out there. And he just got engaged, I think. Yeah. I just saw yeah. Him so what uh, you you grew up here then? Yes. Yeah. And uh, you spent how many years in L.A.? And what was what was the the push to move out there? What was the reason behind that? Yeah. So I was out there for um, just under five years. Um, okay. I actually kind of just like I grew up making like movies with like friends and family and neighbors and just uh, putting on little things with the little camcorder, yeah. you know, with one tape that I just had to keep recording over again. And TV again. cam. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and one of the friends that got roped into the shenanigans um, went to Rock Valley first and took the mass comm class as an elective and was like, yo, you'd really like this. And it's totally up your alley. And I was not like film was not on my radar as far as something you could do like to make a living mm, with. Yeah. Um, and I was like, Oh, I'll check it out. So I went in, took a class for fun. And I remember I was like, Oh, this is, this is so cool. Like, and you can actually make a career out of this. And yeah. Um, what were some of those childhood inspirations 
for like when the movies that you guys would make was it anything like inspired or did you guys just do oh, your own silly i'm sure it was inspired off of things that we like watched and stuff a lot of uh grew up on a lot of old films like classic films oh, really? so which was all like elaborate set dressing like yeah hitchcock <laughs> era stuff yeah or? yeah or like howard keel and like judy garland i don't know those kinds yeah, yeah. of movies okay. okay my fair lady so just very dramatized kind of stuff and wow interesting and then uh, my brother was i'd say an inspiration because he was available <laughs> to yeah. act in whatever <laughs> i was making yeah. up and um so yeah it was like in the in the program i um, I was like, oh, you can actually make a living off of this. And I had a, there was a professor who was like, um, my one piece of advice for anybody interested in going into filmmaking, and that's don't. <laughs> and I'm like, was that? oh, wow. son of a gun, I'm in. <laughs> don't tempt me with a good time. No, that was Sheldon. <laughs> and uh, Was he serious? Oh, yeah, 100%. Really? Honestly, that was like the best piece of advice, I think. I could have gotten because it is a grind like yeah getting into like the industry and like having your own business doing freelance whatever it is um it is not for the faint of heart so yeah if you're deterred by someone saying don't do it like <laughs> you should probably get out <laughs> yeah was that his tactic just probably to, yeah probably. Sort through the yeah yeah okay and so I mean from that moment on I was like all right <laughs> I'm in I'm like I'm gonna do this and I'll show I'm him gonna go to LA and that so then that kind of became the goal like really a quick switch to like you, you can make this happen and yeah um so that's what kind of set that trajectory to get out there and what was it like um trying to explain that to parents or relatives <laughs> <laughs> I mean my in the in the scheme of like Oh, film. My parents were like supportive and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, yeah, well, how, maybe still get a degree. You know, that's, yeah. that's the cute little school in Indiana. Yeah. But, um, um, oh, I see, I see. Okay. okay. <laughs> but the biggest thing, probably like that freaked them out, was like the day that I'm like, okay, I'm moving out there yeah. with like not that much in my bank account and like no job and no place to live other than like a friend, you know, saying that we can, I can stay there for like two weeks and, um, they're like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Find a job. Yeah. Find a place to live. Yeah. Totally, wow. totally freaked them out. But they're like, okay. So I just packed up my little car yeah. with whatever I could fit. And That's amazing. I mean, that was my parents, I had talked from probably about the time I was 10, 11 years old that I was going to be a filmmaker, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever the direction that took me. And <laughs> I think as I got older and older, like I'm 16, 17, I'm still talking about it. That's my goal. 18. Mm -hmm. And that was the point where they're like, okay he's actually serious about this. Like yeah. and he's, he's going to do it. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm still doing it, but yeah, yeah they're, I think they were hoping at one point I just kind of like mm -hmm. not make that, make that vision something else like, Oh, yeah. I'm going to actually get a real job and then do it on the side. <laughs> but moving out to LA is like, that's, that's the stamp of like, okay, I'm doing this. Yeah. So when you were, that's did you connect with like La La Land then, like the early scenes oh, in that, where they're like 100%. they're all living in like the same apartments and oh yes, yeah, and it's like all about who that's you like know, the life, right? Yeah. And yeah, these yeah. relationships yeah. never work out. What's the, the words from the song? It's like you don't know who's gonna be there or something like that. Yeah, like just oh, that sort 100%. Of feel. No, I love that movie, and or even like the show um, BoJack Horseman. Like watching oh, yeah, that's, that back, that's interesting. Is like I'm like this is like if you've lived in LA, you realize how like. Uh, not like it's not a joke this is like really yeah. how like stuff yeah. looks out there and so that's definitely one i i, I want to dive into that a little bit how how was that <laughs> <laughs> With well, that? In, in LA? Just, just the yeah because um it is it's just different it's like it's a different hustle than it is i think here mm -hmm. in chicago um does that make sense without y yeah i mean we're in pretty heavy in the commercial market out yeah here, so it's definitely mm -hmm. different yeah, I, I mean, I've highly haven't... saturated out there. Oh, yeah. like, well, everyone does it. Right? Yeah, yeah. You got like 10 million, like like the, you know, La La Land. Or it's like you the one person there and there's like 100 people that look just like you and are just as talented. Yeah, right. more yeah talented. the auditions. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Such a good Did scene. you find, was it easy to, to make connections and friends through that? Um. Yeah, I mean, it really depends. I mean, I wouldn't just say like, oh, anybody can do it, you know, like go out there and yeah. just, you know, do it. But it takes a definitely adaptability and flexibility mm -hmm. and yeah. um, personality to kind of um, do that. And also a lot of like confidence, but also a lot of humility. <laughs> it's like a really a blend you gotta, yeah. you gotta do. But um, yeah, I mean, my first job, it was like, 
Craigslist. It was mm. um, unpaid, I think, or like a hundred dollars to do like two days on the short film. And I was like, oh, I'm out here. I have no job. It's I have no. Fun. I got yeah. nothing else to do. Might as well. And um, yeah, just did that. And literally every other job I got, like in my entire career, was like launched from that one job. And just I'm you, no kidding. Yeah, you show wow. up. You do like your mm -hmm. most professional best work for whether it's like a free project or you're getting paid your actual day rate, you know, regardless it's you show up, you do like the job, the same kind of um, quality of job you would do yeah. uh, regardless. And, yeah. and that, I mean, paid off. It wasn't like, Oh, I'm just gonna half ass this cause it's, you know, a hundred dollars or no money. Yeah. Um, yeah. so like you just do your most professional work. Um, you're fun to be around. You do, um, I don't know, just, be relational and yeah. uh, people like you like and then they're like hey you were fun to work with you did a great job come on the next one you know or this one's paid more and then mm -hmm. you know. oh that's awesome I mean that, that's, I, a, that's a good mentality too of just yeah. like once the negotiations are done or whatever mm -hmm. regardless of what the rate is once you're on the job that's behind you yeah just you put in your best yeah yeah and you bring your best energy you're not like oh, I'm just gonna slack off because this is a, yeah. a throwaway one or yeah yeah I mean because you signed up for it the, I mean mm -hmm. I've I've taken jobs where it's been less of a rate than my typical rate and inside I'm going oh, I can't believe I'm doing that for what this much <laughs> but it's like okay you agreed now do your best mm -hmm. um but, but it, you're kind of getting paid to network at that point true if yeah you think of it that way it's yes. like because mm -hmm. the best networking is mm -hmm. working so if you think even if short I'm films paid 50 bucks for, i'm not advocating taking bad rates or anything but like yeah, bad rates. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if that's what you need to do and you know to get started that's yeah that totally makes sense Good that's mentality. that's so interesting i mean i i really thought about when i was probably 18 19 i was like man should i just go out there to mm -hmm. la um i i didn't end up doing it but a part of me kind of does think like man i wish i would have just had that experience because how old were you yeah. at that time I was uh, officially 21. 21. Yeah. 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 Okay. But no, so, I mean, I, it was the same thing because I, I had like built this kind of community here in Rockford and it was like, you know, my parents being like, look at this person wants to offer you a job or you could do this yeah. or you could do, you know, and you have all this like safety. And I was like, if I like don't leave now, like I'm never going to do it because mm -hmm. I knew I was going to get comfortable and I knew I was yeah. going to. Yeah, I did. I did the opposite. And I stayed in my area for way too long. And like when I moved here, then I was like, oh, OK, finally, I feel like I'm able to like grow finally. And it, just the network, you know what I mean? Because yeah. I was in Minneapolis, uh, St. Paul. Okay. And you just have a lot of you would have a lot of people from L.A. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends out there, actually. Uh, but it would be day projects, you know, and people from New York. And it's like it's so hard to connect in, in those situations. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then they're gone. You know, yeah. they they use you for their project. <laughs> use you, there is a lot of using yeah. the industry. For sure. No, but I mean, you know, it, it was it's good. And I, I still keep up with some of them. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, it's it, it's just hard to connect. So I, yeah. a part of me always goes, man, I wish I would have done that. Mm -hmm. would, as you look back now, how long has it been since you moved back? Now it's actually been about five years again. OK, so, yeah, so this was 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. that so I went out and just. Yeah. yeah. Um, so w what do you think as you look back at those years, what what were some of the positives out of that and what, what do you think you learned oh yeah I mean there's no regrets about doing it because that yeah. was definitely like the dream and I learned so so much and had like amazing amazing experiences and um, everything that I learned I can you know even back here and we're doing freelance and working in um, with different different people here in the industry um, it just all did was enhance those skills and even like you know uh, grow even more of a love and like passion for it and um yeah, so all, like, all, I mean, there were downsides, but for the most part, there's, like, yeah, just zero regrets about it. Good. Uh, I, I'm just trying to, like, picture myself at 21 and just, like, moving to L.A. It yeah. was L.A., yeah? Yeah, yeah. So it, that, that's so daunting. Mm -hmm. How uh, how do you navigate that? So after that first job, did it just mm -hmm. kind of um, roll from there? Yeah, yeah, like, literally met someone on that set they were like hey you know here's my here's my card actually uh, a friend of mine's making a feature film like and they pay this much like love to have you on it and then from wow. there met you know two or three more people kind of as connections and that person was like brought me to the next one and so all seriously every single film that i got was wow, somehow in like a web of that and th job. these were all different roles or set dressing? All is set dressing and like oh, production all, design. Okay. Yeah. So you went out there knowing that that's what you wanted to do? Um, 
loosely. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was like what I was looking at in like Craigslist primarily for. Um, okay, okay. So, because it was kind of like I had no connections out there. I had the friends who I knew or was living with, none of them were um, pursuing like the same kind of industry. They were more like, oh, models or actors and stuff like that. So, um, zero connections with them. So, it was just yeah. all about like making my own. And so, the, yeah, set dressing, that was kind of what I was looking up um, for like jobs on Craigslist. And then on the other side, it's actually a funny story how I got into like production assistant because that's I feel like it's not common. But I actually started background acting um, oh, as yeah. like a side I've hustle thing, yeah. and um, which oh I feel like nobody takes this like path. But like making friends on set with that with some of the production assistants, and then literally one day out of the blue, um, I was background acting on Grey's Anatomy for um, their like season eight or. 13 who knows (laughs) and uh one day out of the the blue he just like calls me and is like hey we need a day player like and and i'm like what and i'm just like in bed as a background actor as as a pa as a pa as a pa and i was like heck yeah i was like i'll be there and i'm like (laughs) flying to get there and then from then on i never like did background acting again it was all um booked as a pa and just again that's that one guy got me connected so if you want to get into the production office apparently (laughs) the fast track is through background (laughs) acting yes you heard it right here (laughs) i have never heard of anyone else who like had that path but it's very it's funny though how just i mean one connection can lead to any other of other connections yeah and i think i mean like you said just being a good person Mm -hmm. and um yeah, just just being interested and working hard, it just makes such an impression, which makes me think of what are the other people doing? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I mean, I had the similar experience. Well, there's so many people that don't have good social skills these days. It yeah. seems like. Yeah, yeah. I, I that happened to me. I I drove 13 hours to be an extra. Mm. I was just telling Tom the story. So sorry for everyone listening, but <laughs> the um I I sat around uh, just being an extra, and I was like to the producer, "Is there any way I could stick around and just watch you guys?" I'm 18, 17 years old. Yeah. And the produ- producer's like, sure, I'll talk to the director. Yeah, you can stay. And on the third day, I'm, all of a sudden, I'm second AC oh. because the second AC <laughs> didn't show up. That's and amazing. so all of a sudden, I'm slating. I'm running cards, batteries. Like, I have, don't know how to mark cards. I don't know how to, <laughs> you know, then I was a cable wrangler. So um, Harry Anderson from Night Court was on that. And um, um, who? Um, there's another guy who was uh, like into karate back in the 80s so it was like it was stars i'm having conversation Mm -hmm. with these um with these guys who've been in the industry for decades you know and and we were at lunch and he passed on some like wisdom to me and i was just like how crazy is it that like before i was just i was an extra i was in the background yeah so that's part of the industry you get like like, you have to roll with it and now i'm sure that's even more so Mm-hmm. Um, you're con- you have to be adaptable. Yeah. yeah, it's like you go your background acting, and then like got on uh, uh, as like a PA, <laughs> and then the next thing I know, I'm like on set babysitting like Angela from the office's like daughter. Like <laughs> oh, in no the kidding. office, it's just like <laughs> how, did, how does my life like how did this happen? Do you happen? get credit for that? <laughs> Babysitter, <laughs> the you. <laughs> that was like a pilot that didn't even. It was a it was a pilot project that didn't actually air and stuff. But it was just like, what is going on? Yeah, what was that? What was the? Did uh, any of those PA gigs lead back into the set de- um, art department at all? Or so interesting. In, enough if i had like stuck mm-hmm. around i would say yes um i after about the five year mark i was like <laughs> i can't do this the rest of my life out mm. in la but um but yeah actually it was kind of on that trajectory because then as a, a pa you're working with like union production design people and i had met some really like cool connections with that and some people sure. who were definitely going to be like yeah you know if it's a like a union gig or non-union gig whatever um i'll like bring you on or i'll drop your name or i'll like get you on with me because they just liked working with me we had a good relationship sure. kept running into each other or worked on a long i think it was lethal mm-hmm. weapon i was a pa on for like an entire season and you just like um build those connections and um so yeah, yeah it, that was definitely going to be the next step i could have like probably jumped in the union um that way but hmm. what why didn't you i was just like i can't like do this uh in la like the like for the rest of my life Mm. i was just like the hours the everything out there kind of the culture i'm like i did it it was a great experience i had a great time but i this isn't long term like yeah um i was like years of my life were just being like drained away Mm. (laughs) no no offense to la people but i i I 100 get it like it's not my thing either out there (laughs) 
Yeah, that, it, I mean, it is a, it is a life it is a hard lifestyle. Um, is there a, and a, a mentality? I think just a, a kind of that culture in that er, regionally in the mm-hmm. area. Like it's there's different film cultures in different areas. Of yeah, the country. yeah, and that's kind of what specific. I was alluding to before is that it's it is different here in Chicago. Oh I, yeah, I feel yeah. like um, I feel like we do have maybe more of a community here. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what it what it is about it. If it's just you know kind of the, it's smaller, the Midwest for, nice, when it is smaller. It's probably part Midwest of it, but nice. yeah, that's the funny. Midwest nice component. That, that's yeah. literally like I was told like every all the time, especially the first two years. They're like, yeah. you're not from here. <laughs> yeah, being so you're nice. too <laughs> nice. And I was like, oh, I need to get some thicker skin. I guess. Yeah, yeah. I remember that just reminds me of working in Chicago on this project where the I think most of the crew was from New York. They were flying in, and the guy just couldn't get over how nice we were. He's like. <laughs> Yeah. You know, usually we call up like in in New York they have a union for like uh, elevator operators and uh, right. he was telling me about the, I know it's high, ridiculous but <laughs> anyway, so so How he was telling me like if they <laughs> wanted to go to like one of these like like they were shooting on the whatever floor of some building in New York they'd have to hand off all of your gear to this elevator operator they were the ones who would you know take it to the floor and charge whatever and do whatever they do with it <laughs> wow. so he's like i'm calling up you know these buildings because we were shooting some high rise downtown chicago and i was expecting to be like them to answer the phone and be like what do you want and then i have to like you know they're like no oh, oh we'd be happy to help come on over to this dock yeah. number and you know we'll help unload for you <laughs> and that yeah. sort of stuff. i've <laughs> heard that i've worked with out of town people um up in minneapolis and well that's the next would, level that's this... like minnesota nice on oh, top no. of yeah this i know so. yeah <laughs> so yeah true. yeah so true. <laughs> well the, it's 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 yeah, I, I would. I would probably. That was never a long term plan for me either. I, a part of me was like, maybe I'll just go learn, connect, and then just be back. And I know a lot of people that still work half in uh, L.A. and then half up in uh, Minneapolis, St. Paul. They're back and forth. Um, so uh, when you when you moved away, what were some of those? Uh, or I'm sorry, when you were there, what were some of those surprises to you um, with set dressing? Um, I do want to dive into kind of your approach to it and all that, but mm-hmm. were there any surprises that um, that that kind of opened up your mind to the whole process? Um, the surprises, like things I didn't expect to yeah. find in in set dressing. Um, I got one surprise was like how many uh, water bottles you find <laughs> yeah. on your hot set. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> think think Game of Thrones with That's the coffee <laughs> cup. Like going around on the crazy. way here, I was just Serious thinking about problem. that. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that's just crew or actors just forgetting. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, every time they call, you know, cut. You know, they're taking it out from wherever, and it was just like, like, gosh, who would have thought how many times it'd be like throwing away water bottles or like yelling up at people like get yeah, it so. out of the shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. As far yeah, I don't know otherwise. Um, I guess also the amount of like dumpster diving, just I don't know, random like things that you're like, oh, is that you know, film everything's so professional, but really, like, you got to get your hands dirty, like, yeah, over here loading like cinder blocks into my trunk for one set, or like, yeah, dumpster diving for cardboard, or I don't know, dyeing <laughs> lamp shades with wine because we the, everything's closed and we have to have a different color lampshade by oh, you know, two in the morning or something the yeah. liquor stores wow. are still open yeah <laughs> well somehow, somehow we had we had wine already we were okay we, yeah <laughs> we <laughs> sacrificed <laughs> but, interesting yeah, yeah. I adaptability i guess and flexibility those were because i'm i would say my initial approach was very like oh professional you show up you have your whole like you know, a breakdown of everything you need and you're prepared and then you show up and it's like, throw it all out the window. Like mm. everything, you know, uh, is changed. And so a lot more flexibility than, um, I guess than you were expecting. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's pretty much the whole industry too. Right, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's say, so I'm going to preface that with this is you worked on a number of films mm-hmm. um and i'm sure you've gained um a lot of different insight <laughs> into oh, a variety yeah. of different things but um what's your approach and and i understand commercial stuff film that's mm-hmm. somewhat different but let's say uh let's say we're filming uh at a we want to make a coffee um um 
Oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the uh, on the advertisement at a yeah. coffee shop. Hypothetically <laughs> we were, speaking, yeah, we, we have <laughs> no desire oh. to do this at all. Okay, okay. <laughs> no, but like a coffee we shop. We may be re- retaining the services of certain. <laughs> no, we we were we had a commercial come through that we were hoping to make a set for and all that, and we, we were like, oh, let's just I said let's let's see if Julia could do it. Didn't know this was an um, interview process. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why you're here for a podcast, Julia, <laughs> <laughs> in front of the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, it didn't, we end up or having to do it on location. We still might might need you, but I already talked to her about it. So did you? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah, so it's the yeah. same. One and the same. Okay, nice, okay. Nice. So let's say we're doing that, um, and it, we're we're wanting some to kind of set dress uh, a coffee shop. Mm-hmm. And what are some of the from start to finish? What are some of the things that you um, have to consider? Um, when, you know, you're kind of uh, attacking a new project. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like time, budget, the space, um, definitely I'm like, get me in this space. Like if you can, Mm. otherwise a lot of pictures, um, stuff like that, I guess like a time period too, but I guess for like a more of an advertisement that would be just like modern day. Um, and then, yeah, I guess there's the overall, like what is, what is wanted is supposed to be like uh, very minimalist, you know, you want like, uh, monochromatic or do we want something very like bright and like poppy and highly trendy, stylized, highly stylized. Yeah. yeah. So kind of going over those things, which you'll get a feel of that usually in like, what, what if a, what if a director doesn't really know? Or if it's a producer, you know, making a commercial. Yeah. I mean, I am great at just like pulling things out of my ass too. <laughs> like, yeah. hey, like here's a couple different like options or here's how I see it. And then because sometimes um, for like the director, like having a starting place, it's easier to like start with like a whole bunch and then they whittle away or they critique it and be like, no, but I want to change this and this. It's easier mm-hmm. to kind of pick stuff apart than like build it. Right. So like I'm totally fine with like just building a whole bunch of different options or one option and then um the director can kind of like pick and choose if i want these key elements or like scrap the whole thing start again it really um yeah it it depends on who the director is i've worked with a lot of different like types yeah yeah interesting so excuse me man i think uh, i think spring's coming early because my allergies are Oh, starting no. to kick up <laughs> i apologize um cool spring yeah i know uh first full spring first where spring. where do you draw your inspiration because it's like uh, um you th- that's where i go i'm like that would be so overwhelming to me Mm-mm. but if the way i look at you know framing a, sh- a, sh- a scene like where are actors coming from that might be overwhelming to somebody else my mind doesn't work like that you know mm-hmm. i had enough trouble decorating my own family room you know <laughs> my own living area he's <laughs> so, like pinterest help <laughs> no exactly and i was just like i have no idea there's mesh meshes of uh, different styles and you know things that don't belong colors it would be a nightmare if you showed up probably yeah. and be like and judged it <laughs> no but so wh- where do you get this um kind of inspiration for it and and is it something that you've always had just being able to identify different colors and styles things like that yeah i mean um a lot of times with uh, like projects and stuff it's like one does it make sense like you kind of just like you start from there for myself you definitely develop my own style um pulling from just my mm. likes my tastes um things that i've seen and i like that other people have done and it's kind of like mm. a hodgepodge so like any set dresser you get they're going to bring their own kind of like edge to it which is why you know mm. like you watch a Tim Burton film and like they all have a similar kind of aesthetic like he's probably working with the same kinds of like set dressers with those styles that are like the dark moody eerie kind of weird quirky Mm. right he's not gonna hire the uh, you know person doing all the bright you know crazy period pieces necessarily but um yeah so every set dresser kind of has their own style based on their level and of inspiration and kind of things and and then you adapt it for you know i work on the christmas film or i work on a um, yeah. horror film right you're gonna have little pieces of like me in there of uh sure. that's her style but obviously they're like two very different looking uh, yeah. films and yeah and i, I want i do want to go back was um to when you first kind of decided that this was the route you wanted to go before that were you was there like inklings of gearing towards this in, in you know as a kid or in high school and in college yeah i would definitely say <laughs> I, I would say the top two things for me were like directing and and then the set dressing which i didn't necessarily wouldn't have 
identified it as like set dressing right until way later when I learned what like roles were on a film set. Yeah, okay. um, but yeah, there's definitely definitely things where I was always very intentional about the set dressing for like my you know at home videos or yeah. even on um, like the projects in school and stuff like that. It was always like a heavy leaning on the stylized side of it, which again. Um, when you're, you know, in the, the school program and you kind of get all the taste of the little aspects, um, that wasn't until I did my own film that I really was like, okay, this is nailing like the coffin here of like set dressing. Oh, sorry, I'm bumping your mic. Um, and especially like going out to LA, uh, there's like a million and two directors. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, yeah. And everyone is. <laughs> you can't just necessarily like, get a job as a director, right? Yeah, a lot yeah. of it's like you start your own thing and you get people on, you put a lot of money into it. And so when it came kind of to picking between those two of what am I going to look for? Set dressing was the one that it's like, you can jump on someone else's project and get paid for it instead of like ground up. So, but I'm mm. still um, like open to directing. I, I taught a class at Rock Valley the other summer and part of that as like the teacher of it, um, you directed it as well. And oh, I was okay. like, oh, I got to, you know, have yeah, that. And get that out. Um, I have one friend who wrote something that he was like, maybe you could direct it. And so kind of teasing that, that idea still too. But so it is, it is a fun, um, uh, like thing for me, but yeah. I'd say set dressing was really what like took off as my passion. I that's, just, a, that's a good insight too. Just like the, the fact that you assessed like, what is it that I'm thinking about most in mm -hmm. this process yeah. and these projects I've been involved yeah. with and it happened to be set dressing. Yeah. Just kind of a similar story to me too. Like I, I used to DP. I don't really do that anymore. But like I, I noticed that I was always thinking about the lighting. Like 90% of my DP process was thinking about the lights. I'm yeah. like, maybe I'm yeah. actually more of a gaffer. You know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I'm, I, <laughs> when I was a kid, I, I'm focusing on special effects. I'm focusing on camera work. And then, you know, your focus was on how does the the background look and right, how does right. the sound look. Like I have one angle for this camera. Maybe we move it. Probably yeah. Not. Well, something interesting yeah. that Chris said too, Chris uh, Preet. Yeah, in his podcast was yeah. um, like you could build a set and and all that, but then it's just there, like until it's dressed. I'm like, that's actually a yeah. good point. Like mm -hmm. you, you you're not gonna walk in a room and everything's just bare walls, and you know even if the they're interesting angles, it's like there's that's what gives it the life. Yeah, this, this, yeah, this set dressing. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's just it's an interesting focus. I love I love hearing why people decided to like what would that that kind of origin story is because yeah. I think it kind of like defines the rest of it. You know, absolutely. Um, what do you think makes for good set dressing? Because you you kn you know when you see it, mm -hmm. but um, is it, it? I mean, obviously it's the level of detail. But yeah. what are some of those elements that somebody who doesn't know much about set dressing, what what would be some of those elements that that would be missing? And you know, not good set dressing. Yeah, I mean, well, like practicality would be one. Like, does it make sense? Like, unless mm. the goal is to have it really like, stand out and make you yeah. like uncomfortable, which you know, there's that like style too of like something feels off about mm. this. You know, that's part oh, of sure. play into the story too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But for the most part, you know, you want it to like blend in. You want the attention to be drawn where it's supposed to. So if the if the attention is supposed to be drawn to you know like the knife sitting on the counter, you know, you're gonna kind of design the whole room and everything around that and then yeah. the you know the gaffer is going to make sure that the light plays into where you know the attention is supposed to be drawn so it's a lot of like um playing nice with others um for sure yeah. with the director okay. and the gaffer. playing nice with all the other <laughs> yeah the dp right you know <laughs> um so yeah so it's like it has to make sense um and having just you know you do it enough that you kind of realize what what that is and what that looks like and then also um like continuity is like a big thing with yeah. I mean every department mm. but especially like set dressing of you know it take like thousands and thousands of pictures on my phone mm. on a, like a set day right oh, with sure. every shot and every setup of what's the starting point what's the ending point and making sure it all that makes a lot of sense so I suppose you probably would talk to the continuity mm -hmm. person a whole lot like that would be like one of your primary well people. hopefully you don't talk to them because you're doing your job <laughs> well doing your job. No. Yeah. <laughs> but uh coordinating yeah. with them or yeah <laughs> you know on that cut usually it's yeah the property person like running in resetting um the their specific stuff everyone's got to reset right depending on like what the scene is and everyone's kind of you know in continuity they're looking at so so much the scripty sure. and and stuff that it's like if you can just lighten their load a little yes you know because mm. like they can't be in charge of looking of like is the hair in the same spot is the suitcase in the same spot did the cup in the you know yeah that cup moved over four right inches. right especially if cameras moving and everything's got to reset and 
you know, they're looking at marks. They're more focused on the actors than maybe the stuff, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. Makes sense. What, what do you think? What's that? One of the questions I thought about was the collaboration mm-hmm. on set. You know, and you were just saying between the DP, between the gaffer, oh, yeah. what what is that like? And what's it just set that up for me? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, yeah. How, what's that process like? Yeah. I mean, it. I you always try to like play nice with others. That's also how you get yeah. called back on set. Right. It could be the gaffer who's calling you on your next like project. You know, if it's a it's like a B list or indie project. Right. Yeah. Um, they like you. They're going to recommend you and stuff like that. But yeah. Um, yeah, you know, if you have a, a shot set up and you think you come into it and you're like, this is what I want the room to look like. And then the the gaffer's like, we need a practical over here. Like, and you're either going to like, we're going to fight with the gaffer and be like, this is how my room's set up, right? You're mm. going to try to like adapt in a way that helps the other person and then they can in turn help you or even like a, the DP um, if they suddenly want to kind of get creative and move uh, like a dresser or a lamp in another place, and you're like, the the lamp's been like playing in that corner all day, and now you want to move it in like front of the camera, like across <laughs> from the bed, like you yeah. know. Um, so you're you're trying to figure it out. If they say they want you know something in frame, you go find something to put in frame or um, different like, you know set pieces to make it interesting and yeah. help them. Um, and then like with the director, um, you know, you, you try to pick your battles, right? Where you're like, hey, this might not make sense because it looked like this all day and now it looks like this. And if, you know, sometimes they say, oh, thanks for letting me know. And sometimes they say, it eh, doesn't matter. No one's going to notice. And you say, okay. And yeah. You your it. call. Your movie. Your movie. Yeah. I, I, as you were saying that, going, grabbing something, you need, you need something in frame. Like that's yeah. one of the, even in commercial stuff for sure. That's yeah. like, okay, we need something in the background. That There's nothing there. Yep. I was just thinking about uh, working on, LED volume walls are kind of, you know, the new thing. But yeah. just how important a set dresser is yes. in that environment, too. Even mm-hmm. though there's not a physical set, it's really the stuff in the foreground and, yeah. the, and between the talent and, and the wall that mm-hmm. really sells the shot. Right. And doesn't look, you know, doesn't look too busy, doesn't look too, like, empty. You know, there's all those yeah. things depending on the what the project is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the, last the, more, the more real elements you can have in right. there, the better it sells the fake stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, the last project we worked on together that was an LED wall project. It was uh, for a nonprofit, and the, this, this lady had to bring in buckets of sand mm. for, like, a fake exterior. And she, she, <laughs> she, I think she filled up, like, a pool or something. It was like a... I think it was a tarp. Okay, but, but yeah, was, yeah, but it, I mean, like that's the uh, there was a bunch of other things like old bed and like mm-hmm. um ma- old the clothesline I thought was the clothesline. so we did the shot that was like up toward the LED wall. It was a sky and there was I think it was a, the tree was in the shot right or was it uh, like in the in the background in the projection or the yeah yeah it was in the projection. projection yeah or the, but yeah like, <laughs> the I thought LED that wall. was one of the most convincing <laughs> shots of the day and again it was all yeah all yeah. departments working together to pull yeah. it off but like it was a it was just how the the clothesline was hung, combined with our light that yeah. we struck from the same direction as that. But I thought it was funny. This lady uh, has so much stuff that she just brought in the back of her yeah. van, and buckets of sand. And in Chicago, like where are you gonna find sand in Chicago? Right. Uh, so you have to be the beach. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Maybe that's where it was. No, but I'm just scooping up. So. <laughs> but like these these old mattresses that she got. I was I was just like I, I think I was talking to her afterwards and or she made like a comment like yeah I I don't know where I found this stuff. So and as you were talking, I was thinking, man, you like you guys are probably one of the most adaptable departments because mm-hmm. like you do have to be resourceful, maybe resourceful yeah. and adaptable. Oh yeah. But so where, where, if you're needing like unique things, cause I know you worked, you worked on a film. Um, I can't remember what it was called. I just looked on your website. Mm-hmm. Um, the Dawn. Oh or yes. Was yeah. it The Dawn? Oh, that's so funny. I guess I was thinking about that movie the most today when I was like, my so, most memorable and also most difficult film set. Was it? Now, I want to <laughs> actually, one of the, um, I one of the actresses that one, was, but uh in that movie is going to be on a commercial project that we're working oh. on so we'll tell you after okay. it's okay, it's okay. in the works yeah, but yeah, yeah. I, I saw Maybe. her don't uh, and i was like yeah <laughs> this this brings it down so <laughs> <laughs> the agent's like nope um so uh what was the point of that i lost track but okay, the, the dawn <laughs> the dawn yeah i mean and as i thought i looked at that film too i was like where do you uh, like the resourcefulness you have to have like where do you get all these props 
where do you find you know little unique items that yeah. that give it character? It's not all stuff you can buy brand new off of Amazon. Oh right? no, yeah. I'm always like yeah. ravaging through like. Although I'm sure you basement. use like the Amazon returns um, never. rental service. Ne- <laughs> would never do such a thing. Um, no, I don't know what you're talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we'll talk about that later too. <laughs> no, <laughs> Bezos um, is well aware. I'm sure. <laughs> um, He's like, don't ship anything to LA anymore, guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? yeah. <laughs> No, I was, you know, rubbinging through, like, people's, like, basements and, like, you know, whatever, you know, you can have Give access to. Give a background to. of the movie first. Um, what kind of, the, oh, the. So, the movie. Uh, oh, my gosh, I just said The Dawn. Thank okay. you. Okay, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, like, horror, like, um, but, like, a girl who's a gonna be a nun and she needs an exorcism basically is yeah, the, yeah, yeah the synopsis sounds like um, some pretty common plot points <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah there was a lot of stuff that they so the the director um and producer and lead actress they're, so they're friends of friends of mine and so working with them they had kind of an idea of like hey there's this like person we know here's their whole like garage warehouse thing of mm. like crazy stuff like go have fun or Mm. um with them they were pretty like um since we were like friends they were very like involved with things we'd go to um like a prop warehouse and pick out you know different things they wanted for the big pieces kind of um more say in stuff and then for the some of the special effects stuff a lot of it they wanted practical um And there was, like, one thing that I had to do. It was this, like, they wanted uh, these, like, crosses on the wall to, like, all, like, curl up or something as um, the the girl, like, walked by. And, oh, my gosh, I went to so many stores. I got so many different materials to try to, like, make this, like, a practical, like, effect. And I'm, like, up all night and, like, with, like, different kind of materials and molds and all this stuff. And nothing was, nothing was working. And. Um, I think finally That's a big ask. Yeah, yeah, it is a big ask. Can you just like have these crosses there? And then they roll up and I'm like, oh gosh, okay. Um, but eventually like a fruit roll up roll? Basically, yeah. Wow. Um so or of like yeah. some kind of twisting. So in the end it ended up going with like like a metal, like a thin sheet metal that you could just like bend and like twist. But at the end of the day, like so all that all that time, all those hours, everything like trying to make this work, and at the end of the day, all the footage was like gone. <laughs> like it's it's like a whole there was a whole drama thing on set where like half the crew walked off and then oh. one of them like deleted some footage and that was like all the stuff with these oh crosses it was just like oh, oh no the drama. way but yeah so that was a, that was a wild wild set but wow all that work was in minnesota gone. actually oh no kidding yeah what it, part um i think it was it was the where's mall of america minneapolis yeah yeah it was minneapolis area it was okay. january it was oh, like fun. A that's the best time to be there. High of one or <laughs> two degrees yeah. during the day, a low of negative yeah. seventeen, and they also had to make um like statues like cry blood, um like oh. so I was like trying to make a material that wouldn't freeze, freeze yeah. the so second you, I dripped it. Oh, interesting. <laughs> and, so you're in charge of those types of elements as well. It, it depends. Like yeah, um, like these practical effects. S- sometimes I've been on sets where like the somebody else's. Like specializing special in like blood or yeah. special effects or whatever. Mm. Like for the dawn, there was like a couple breakaway glass scenes that like I wasn't in charge of the breakaway glass. That was the stunt people. Okay. okay. Um. But yeah. So like making statues cry blood. It was like it just kept freezing. And I was like yeah. more oil. <laughs> <laughs> what was it, what was your solution? Like more oils and like different things and oh, just okay. being like really quick and but uh, with the amount of uh, materials that like I had. You know, they didn't plan that. There was like a day of, they're like, you know, it'd be cool having oh, statues wow. like cry mm. blood. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going to like so what's close CBS. Yeah, you just shoot in an hour. Cool. I'm like, okay, food coloring. Like, uh, what can I, wow. what can I do that doesn't just like freeze? So when, when you have those off comments, you're like, let's, let's make them cry blood. You know, you basically have to get it done before production the next day. So yeah, you're that, out all night. Day. Yeah. So either all night you're working on like that was the situation with the lamps that we were dying with um, wine was like that was just they're like, we want not white lampshades. Um, it's like, OK, what are our options? Mm. Um, we have red wine and no other like materials because this was not planned. Right. Yeah. Um, or with, like the the blood. It's like, OK, go to a store. What can I find, you know, in an wow. hour to mix up something? <laughs> Interesting. So I, I do want to go back to um, some of these, the, the resourcefulness that you have to have. And w- what are some of the, 
uh, places that you've been able to find, um, you know, different accessories or props or, you know, items. Are thrift shops like a... Yeah. Because that's where that's where we or? we just did for the Christmas party. We had, mm-hmm. well, you were here, obviously. Yeah. Um, we had to decorate that whole thing. So uh, Chris should and I have went to. <laughs> Honestly, we should. I don't know what we were thinking. I don't know. Did you uh, get statues crying Chris blood? Because no, <laughs> <laughs> I guess that wasn't part of the. Uh, yeah, no, I have worked on the Christmas we film too, so very yeah. well versed in the ways. So we, I mean, we went to thrift shops. We went to um, Target, mm-hmm. um, a couple of other places. So, what what are your kind of go to places for? different items yeah i mean it, d- it depends on the on the budget or like what they're looking for like everything from actual like in la going to the actual warehouses like four props to like oh, sure. get specific yeah, yeah. practical pieces but otherwise yeah i mean depending on the turnaround if you need something very specific in a couple days like yeah you got to go with with amazon and just and get the thing because um depending on your timeline you can't spend like you know, weeks and weeks looking for things out at like stores and stuff. But um, otherwise, yeah, definitely a lot of thrift shops for trying to. Yeah, because that's obviously adds to the expense too, is the amount of time you spend looking for something. Right, absolutely. Yeah. So So, it doesn't matter if you find it for five bucks if you put three days into looking for it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. So definitely things are moving more toward um, Amazon. I know I go to a lot of just like, you know, you know, the dollar store or TJ Maxx, like those kinds of things. If it was a lower budget, yeah, um, for certain for certain items, but thrift stores are awesome to yeah. go to anyway. 100%. That's my favorite. Yeah, <laughs> I freaking love it. You can find little hidden gems. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So how much of it is like you picture this thing in your mind and you try to go find it mm-hmm. versus you're being a little more opportunistic about it, like you're walking down an aisle of stuff at a yeah. I don't know where or some random place with random stuff. Like, <laughs> I'd probably, this is kind of more. Yeah. Like, I'd probably like start there, except, you know, making a list of like very specific, like we need this kind of box or they want a journal that has like this kind of bird mm-hmm. or something, yeah. you know, um, you're going to go more in like the Etsy or like specially made kind of things. But oh, yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I may have to custom order some stuff uh, depending on what it is. But yeah, I would say for the list of just the whatevers, if you have like an idea of like, oh, I want, you know, this room needs to be all black. Let's go shopping and just grab all the black things at a thrift store, you know, that you can get or um, need these kind of pillows. So, you know, there's some flexibility um, with it, but for the specifics, mm. you got to. Have you had to kind of become crafty too or or do you th- or were you before like just crafty compiling? as in like just <laughs> handy with crafts yeah not yeah, like not not, supplying not snacks. food yeah I also love snacks <laughs> no but um yeah definitely i've gotten more more crafty like actually i worked on a project with dosaya uh for insurance commercial and it was yeah. like he's like i need a pup a puppet to like pop out of like a looney tunes like board thing and i'm like okay well i guess mm-hmm. i'm a painter now <laughs> and uh so yeah I've definitely Which gotten, turned out great yay i've definitely gotten more crafty with kind of stuff like that yeah. um where it's like all right you know i'm not really in like the construction of like a sets necessarily but the smaller things like that yeah, yeah. or like molding crosses <laughs> whatever it is yeah um yeah you definitely learn about more materials and different and different things yeah it, i'm just it's such a there's I mean I know what set dressing is right but it's like there's there's so many elements to it that I don't uh, I haven't gotten a perspective Mm. into just because you know I've worked around it before but it's you don't you know you don't fully dive into it and um, I'm just thinking of the the uh, yeah just the flexibility that you have to have going Mm -hmm. in on every project um, does it ever get overwhelming for you to know that <laughs> most of the time you're going to come in on a project, whether it's film or commercial, and you're going to have to be 100% adaptable? Yeah. Does that ever get overwhelming? Um, n- uh, no, that's probably not. I mean, I'm sure it could be. That's probably not the spot for me. I'd say any kind mm. of overwhelming would be at the front end, maybe when nothing is done. <laughs> and okay. it's like, oh, you know, before I kind of have like my baseline plan. But I mean, I always go in with a a baseline and but then also with the plan of it's all gonna could all be for naught yeah but, um, and not overwhelming but just like um what's the what would be the word to just uh, i guess overwhelming for me but like knowing when we go into production if if i'm operating a camera if i'm a dp um producing something there's there's if the day is going totally unplanned like there's a problem but for you, it seems like that's just par for the course. Yeah. Does that make sense? I There's guess, just a difference. Yeah. I wouldn't say, yeah, going in for expecting like 
the problems. I guess if there was a bunch of problems, that would be like yeah. overwhelming. Um, but it's like there's certain things that you're going to just try and make it happen. Um, and at the end of the day, you're like, well, you, this isn't you didn't ask for this. And in far enough advance, like I'm doing my best. You try to get yeah. it done. And like if you can't, you can't. Like, I mean, I was like this close to throwing in the towel for the crosses of being like, I have tried yeah. everything. And then like happened to come across something that like worked. Um, so, yeah. I guess there's a little bit of a difference of like problems where the things you have planned are all going wrong. Yeah. That would definitely be overwhelming. But um, yeah. if it's things that like as they come up, they want to try something or um, you just need to be like flexible. You you know, if you go in prepared for that, yeah, would it be overwhelming? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I imagine like you'd have to stay on a commercial project. You're there for a couple of few yeah. days. You mm-hmm. can probably be pretty specific about the shots you're going to yeah. get. But I'm sure like on a, a feature or, or even a sh- you know, a short, like you have to be in closer communication with the DP or mm-hmm. and, and or director to kind of be like, what shots are we actually getting? Yeah. For instance, like that, the sand on that one project you mentioned, mm-hmm. I'm sure she doesn't carry around all that sand all the time. You know, so she <laughs> knew there was a shot down at the ground. So sand, right? <laughs> like, yeah, no, but yeah, I mean, if she I'm, showed up with no sand and he was like, we need a pool full of sand. She'd be like, oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it, I'm just thinking mainly for films and it's, uh, you know, I, I do films myself and, um, uh, lower budget, yeah. they're, you know, they're passion projects sometimes. And then you just have to whip up anything and everything you have and you have to be adaptable. And it's like, um, sometimes you're getting paid, but it's mm-hmm. still one of those like passiony projects, yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, you have to treat it like a real project. Mm-hmm. You're getting paid, but at the same time it's schedule things, yeah. you know, go off all the time. So that's where I go. I'm like, Oh yeah, you like, that's where it falls on you guys, where you have to be probably one of the more adaptable departments. Mm-hmm. And I would, I would get a little stressed out probably. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love the stress. I like, yeah. I thrive in it, but I'm like, yeah. if the whole team is waiting for you, you know, right. um, I, you seem like someone who's loves the pressure. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm it's been pretty like good under yeah. pressure. I'm kind of just like just steady, <laughs> yeah. like no matter you know no matter what. That's just kind of like all right, you just figure it out, and if it doesn't work out, doesn't mm. work out. But you you try to make it happen, and um, yeah, I'm not super like that's probably it. part of why you get called back too. You yeah, you know, like you throw you a curveball, and you're like, oh, they didn't tell me <laughs> anything <laughs> about this. I'm never <laughs> working for him again. <laughs> Roll your eyes every time the director says something. But do you think? Do you think you thrive in pressure like the those the cross scenario? I Is guess adrenaline gets going. You're like, no, I wouldn't. Say no, <laughs> I'd say I was like definitely kept my cool, but I was like kind of freaking out because like you want to yeah. make it work. You want you know they're like we want this practical effect, and I'm like. I have no idea how like that's going to be, yeah. you know, make it. But, um, you know, you just k- keep trying and, and trying and trying. So, yeah, I mean, it is it was stressful. Do I would I say I thrive under it? certain levels of stress? Probably like, yeah, like thrive under. I mean, I do love like the whole like on set and the big energy and all of that. Um, mm-hmm. But, yeah, I mean, I would be disappointed if I couldn't have made it happen. This them. makes me miss like a energy of a set. Mm-hmm. I haven't been a part of like a film set. And well, you were just on, on a film set, but I haven't been on one in probably years oh, wow. so it's like um getting my blood going yeah. <laughs> like an actual film film like a yeah. narrative yeah. yeah everybody working together collaborating he's like um, i miss the pressure yeah no and I, <laughs> that too yeah it's just uh there's there's just an excitement about it and you you have to be on mm-hmm. you know yeah um are there any is there anything that i miss that would be um that would be important to know about set dressing um, what would be something, I guess, the... Like you would want, like, what would, someone to come to you with this information? Like, no, like, the, what would be some of the um, things that people don't consider? Do you think, is there anything that would um, fall in that category of, like, it's a huge part of your job, but it maybe goes unnoticed? Um, I'm not sure We that covered would, quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess, like, it is very different with your, like, in the union versus working um, on like a like freelance like independent project okay. and yeah. kind of being prepared for those because in the union world like you have to very much stay in your lane right like if you're a set dresser you're not touching property you're not 
touching anything green even like right you know yeah. <laughs> greens, man, yeah. Yeah. greens is like their yeah. own thing you're that's not that's a good point uh, you know like you have to very much stay in your lane um or i mean even like legally there can be stuff where with an independent project um i didn't even think about that with the yeah. greens man. i'm like no, yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean like don't touch that plant okay yeah. me, like we're <laughs> kind of largely you mm-hmm. know melded here in the midwest but yeah, yeah. what's that yeah. way in la is like you don't touch a light stand if you're mm-hmm. you know, in the, you know, oh yeah, yeah. big but, time yeah. no no and like um you know even with that with you know even like the water bottles on set right you, like you can really get in trouble for that i'm sure someone yeah. got fired on <laughs> game of thrones for that right but <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> in the independent film world yeah you're if you know, I was hired as a set dresser, but then I was also doing production design. I was also doing property. I was also doing greens, right? You mm. have to yeah. kind of oversee all that. You're also doing the continuity yeah. for that. The whole um, art department. You're the entire yeah. mm-hmm. art department. That's how it was with the, the job in uh, Minnesota, too. So that was like um, kind of, you know, you're just, you're everything. And I remember that was challenging because I was like very, very sick when I got out there. But it was like, well, that's too bad. Like, you're the only person here doing all of yeah. this stuff. Mm-hmm. You just got to like get it together and make it happen. And, um, yeah. And for that one, like they didn't have like a, you know, blood making person. Right. So you're kind of just, uh, (laughs) knowing that they're very two different sides of the same coin, um, as you're pursuing. Does being production designers ahead of like the art department, right? Uh, Yes. Does that like interest you at all? Like that? Um, Um, or, I or do you dabbled. really prefer being like the set dresser? <laughs> I would say I prefer the like the set dressing and the and the props. Um, okay. working mm-hmm. with that. Um, I've done um, some production designing. I did. Um, it was like a YouTube series, uh, Marlon Wayne's story time or something. I'm not sure if one of them or all of them aired, but it was like the whole set. You know, we kept like coming up with everything on that from like conception. Sure. It was definitely a different take than working under. Uh, a production designer who's mm-hmm. like this is what it's gonna look like find the elements to dress it you know and <clears throat> then like the props and yeah. you know watching uh continuity and stuff like that so yeah i've worked on both sides i'd say set dressing is really what i was like yeah this that, is the that's niche. that's my yeah. niche yeah yeah because yeah. yeah. I mean, on that your film myriad like mm-hmm. you really were the production designer yeah and that is well. yeah yeah. But and, and I remember that like that was a good while ago. Yeah, that, that, that film. That's funny. Tom was just he just asked me the other day. He's like, I just watched this again, <laughs> and it was so good. <laughs> it and looked I was pretty like, good. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I remember. I remember at the time too. Just like the detail you had in. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it was. Was it? I know it was a wa- like a clock shop. Like yeah. That, a, a, yeah. A bulk of the film took place there. Yeah, except for the couple of pickups we did in in the, my basement. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was. Uh, yeah, I mean just. I mean, for one thing, the location was incredible. It mm-hmm. was like a little clock shop, so there's clocks everywhere. But yeah. like you brought in, in all in this Rockford? stuff, and yeah, mm-hmm. oh cool. Uh, shoot, I can't think of the the Krenk's clock. Yes, Haven? Some, uh, some Krenk's that's awesome. awesome. Two fifty yeah. one there. Yeah, going to Loves Park, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. cool. Uh, I I want to get to production assistant mm-hmm. really quick. Yeah, but the uh, the last question I have um, on set dressing. So uh, we have a lot of commercial. Um, filmmakers okay. <laughs> here, right? Yeah. So I think that's one of those things where I haven't worked with a lot of set dressers for commercial stuff. We end up getting, we end up doing that on the day of, mm-hmm. you know, like if you're shooting even interviews or if you're shooting, um, like we, I do patient testimonials for mm-hmm. hospitals. Those would be great to have a set dresser on. Cause we're having to kind of scramble on the day of at an Airbnb yeah. or whatever, um, and to make that seem homey or, you know, make it seem lot, not like a Airbnb, like it's yeah. an environment where they're actually living. Um, it takes too much time, mm-hmm. time we don't have, right. you know, on the day of production. So, um, some of that we take into effect mm-hmm. a little bit, but what would be your pitch, um, to, um, commercial filmmakers and commercial projects to, to hire a set dresser? I mean, what, what, um, why should you be factored in the budget <laughs> yeah. from out the gate? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how, do, how would that make a project stand apart? I mean, it would really level up the production value um, for like probably like, you know, as relatively not that much on the grand scheme of like the project, what the project cost to have yeah. that just the production value that it would add is so much more than what it would like even like cost you i would say yeah. um because like you said with time like time is money on these you have this amount of time and um the thing that a set dresser does is like they work in the same timeline that you're working so like they're doing all of this stuff behind the scenes that 
like so you who they're paying to say the f- film it right you're mm-hmm. um like they're paying you like that money to film it and if you're spending a big chunk of your time mm. um yeah, instead of focusing Great on point. the angles and stuff like really they're losing money by not hiring a set yeah. dresser <laughs> because no, like that's a valid point. you know like you're there for the cameras and to focus on that and if you have to give up a chunk of that to be like oh there's like a weird empty corner over here like what would i put there i have no idea throw mm-hmm. in something and then maybe that thing doesn't even Makes sense, and you just made it worse, right? You know. Why is there a vacuum sitting in the corner? <laughs> we needed something, okay? It's homey. <laughs> it's lived in. <laughs> it's homey. No, that's. That, I mean, that that's. Is a, that is a big deal, though, because like, I mean, you're making what the camera's looking at look better. Mm-hmm. So it, if if it already looks good, then you're just gonna yeah. make the DP's job better, the director's job easier. Right. Yeah, the time itself is just yeah. like you don't have to worry about it. You can be spending it talking to the right. especially talent. like working on a stage. Mm-hmm. because there's oh, yeah. there's nothing there unless you put it there. Right. And it, it takes, you know, two minutes away from you to be like, hey, can we get something in place of that? Or can we get something set there? Right. That's two minutes of your thought that you ha- only have to use um, to think that yeah. versus now I have to spend a half hour going, running around, tracking something down to put there. So, yeah. Um, it's like the <laughs> this is the scenario I run into. It's when you're I'm behind the camera and somebody's got to fly away. When I'm working with Jude and Holly, I can say, hey, Jude, Holly, they're flyway or, you know, the, the shiny spot. But if you're just you without hair and makeup team, you're like, um, yeah, just do this way, you know, go yeah. like this. And it's like, oh, there's goes five minutes. Or could you imagine? <laughs> Don't right? mess that <laughs> Then you have to go <laughs> yeah. up from behind the yeah. camera and right, go Right, right. You're, you're on your rig. Yeah. yeah. You got to go up there. You got to yeah. mess with their hair. You got to shine up their face or whatever. Right. And you get back and then it's like, OK, well, there goes your 15 yeah. minutes. And I got to get reset. Now the battery's dead. Now yeah. the camera's <laughs> full. Whatever. <laughs> Production time is expensive. Yeah. That's yeah. one of the most expensive things. Well, so. I, uh, the last one of the things I just thought of, would you approach a studio uh, shoot any differently? than um a, a regular on location oh for sure for sure um because right you're working with like a blank space yeah. right so like uh um with the one project i worked with uh, josiah on he was like hey here's the things that i have um here's the things that i would like to see that we don't have if um you know if i could have it or if i can find it borrow it from someone um to save the money there so then he can pay me more like i want to do that right yeah um but then you go on location and a lot of times you you know, see what you can work with, what you can play in. You're yeah. not starting from a, a blank canvas. So definitely the approach is different. More, uh, would it take more time, more thought in kind of the, before you start the project and figuring out, mm. you know, what color are the walls or, you know, if, you know, obviously it's not all your responsibility, but yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking it would be more difficult to, um, On to a start stage over. Versus yeah. It's kind of, it's kind of like lighting, uh, you know, on in studio, it, mm-hmm. you don't have any light to play with, so you have to make it, manufacture it. Nothing's like, there unless you put it there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, on location, you you have the sun. Okay, yeah. where's the sun coming from? Let's play into that. So mm-hmm. you have no sun when you, yeah. <laughs> you know, when you're. I'm, yeah, I think anything would be probably easier in some ways in a studio because um, you can really just like move anything and everything however you yeah. want and you have a yeah. lot of very controlled space but then there's other aspects that make it easier like on a location because you're like well this is what you're working with and yeah. there's so only so much we can do yes yeah, so there's only so much we can do um before it's like okay you need a whole new room right mm-hmm. but uh so yeah, yeah there's definitely elements that are uh, easier in studio and that are also harder and vice versa for on um, location is there one i prefer i wouldn't even i couldn't even tell you i don't think so hmm yeah, yeah, just an interesting thought I th- mm-hmm. um, had, because yeah, I mean, when we were getting ready for the Christmas party, we had a blank slate. Yeah, it was just like okay, I was I was honestly the overwhelmed one. Chris <laughs> and Josiah sat down and they had this, they had this plan on one day, and then when they had the plan, I was like, oh yeah, let's do this. Yeah. Well, <laughs> but like before, it's eye. yeah, it's hard Thanks. to visualize it, you know, sometimes mm-hmm. um, when you don't when you're on a blank slate. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, I do want to touch on briefly um, production assistants. So mm-hmm. you've, you've worked on um, a number of well-known TV shows. All TV shows or? Um, yes, <clears throat> I believe. Oh, no, a couple of movies too. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah wh- what was that experience like? I, I mean, I know you, you got the... Uh, you got those jobs through starting in <laughs> as an extra and yeah. it just snowballed from there. Yeah, it really, I mean, it's, it was wild. <laughs> you have to be like 
on your feet, like literally and figuratively all the time. You know, you it's that's definitely like a fake it till you make it kind of mm. situation. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, you're doing everything from like rounding up like walkie talkies and labeling them to locking up, um, you know, locations. Um, we were like downtown for uh, it was this one movie and it was like. <laughs> very like people are just like walking around all over the place it's downtown and you have to tell them to like stop and you got to be like you're making a movie and if this person gets by like it's your like butt on the mm-hmm. line with the yeah. first ad like whose whose street corner was that i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> um, get you know, her off the set yeah yeah uh, from that to like inviting talent to set you know um and the talent that if they don't like each other it's just a series of inviting one and then inviting the other and then inviting back and forth and back and forth and mm. So, yeah, I mean, you're really doing everything. You're running around. You're, yeah, you have to just be on your feet all the time and ready for anything. Yeah. I you, I saw you worked on the low files as well. Yeah. I've not seen the show, but I really wanted to. That seemed like a really interesting yeah. um, show. Was it how many seasons? You oh were just gosh. on one? Or? I, I was just on one. So okay. I'm not sure how many. I know they travel the world for that, I think. Yeah. So interesting. I was actually in office um, PA for that one. Okay, okay. So I was the one like in pre-production like calling up like place haunted places and being like hey we have a unnamed star um Mm. that would like to you know come and do this like film production and you know just getting like shot down all the time oh you would have to say you would couldn't say the name uh, that was like a last resort they had oh really okay it's rob why is that (laughs) i don't i don't know because they it's in the pre-production like phase (laughs) yeah maybe they're gonna ask for more money (laughs) or they didn't want of course you know too many people to know about the show like ahead of time Okay. You know, yeah, I, yeah. I, who who knows all sorts of like non-disclosure things, yeah. but they're like try not to name drop. But if you have to, final result. Yeah, PA. You know, when I've been a PA, um, I was on a, a travel channel uh, like documentary shoot, and it was uh, all about like monsters, like myth- mythical monsters, okay, like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, the like Mothman. Yeah, no, Sasquatch. Like the, no, crazier, like paranormal well, Sasquatch ones. Is real, but. Yeah, Sasquatches. <laughs> well, there was a version up north and uh, kind of in my area where I grew up. They, so they were filming there and they were filming down here near Milwaukee, um, the Beast of Bray Road. Anyway, it was it, interesting stuff. Yeah. I'm, I'm a nerd like that. <laughs> but <laughs> You would have loved was, this job. Then. Yeah. <laughs> you to, like, I know. You had to know That's, all this stuff. I was like Googling, like, I don't know, paranormal activity. Oh, man, I'm I'm well researched. That and the, the other movie, the the. I can't remember the name of it. Um, the Nun movie. Oh, The Dawn. The yeah, Dawn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. My gosh. Um, See, I don't even watch horror, so I was just like. <laughs> I Yeah, I can't watch I it by myself. <laughs> Only with friends. <laughs> uh, no, but it's like you, th- that's another one of those roles. It's have to be super adaptable mm-hmm. um, and then have a really good attitude because if you don't have, it, it kind of can be a sucky job if oh, if you're not sure. prepared to being a PA. Yeah. Um cuz we we were in the cold. So we were filming the Beast of Bray Road. They, you know, typical tra- um travel um channel type stuff where yeah. they're setting up to catch this monster, right? So we're we lit this barn, this old barn in the middle of nowhere and um the entire so we're talking about a monster the entire shoot, right? For three days, whatever it is. We're talking about monsters, mis- yeah, mis- yeah. mystical, mythical things, and um, witchcraft. We got into that. So everybody, <laughs> we light this barn, and everybody goes to this location a mile or two away. And guess who has to stay behind <laughs> by themselves in this barn? All right, lock Me. up the location, <laughs> PA. It's haunted, no, but don't worry. It wasn't even locking up. They just wanted me to stay no. back for the heck of it. Fire watch. Let protect, me tell protect you. Protect the monster. Don't let him get away. <laughs> let me tell you. When the Beast of Bray Road is on the prowl, it'll make any man scared. <laughs> oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, working on the, the dawn, like any, anyone who worked on that would be like, paranormal like stuff was happening. Like, constantly. Oh, no like, I mean, I was just like, I was like sick and on Theraflu passed out at night. You know, I was out of this whole thing. But everyone else was like, oh, you know, my makeup moved in the bathroom. <laughs> like everyone, everything was like, all you're thinking about is, yeah, the exorcism kind of stuff. And, and yeah. everyone's like reading into everything. And like, oh, yeah. No, paranormal stuff was happening. On I love that. I love that stuff. Like, don't oh. don't get me started. <laughs> <laughs> so start a different podcast yeah, for that. This is yeah. W- I would love to honestly. <laughs> um, yeah. No. So a PA. It's just uh, every time I've been a PA, 
it's like you have to just yeah. It sometimes it's, it is hard just to muster up that good attitude. Yeah. Because it is so different and unique. Um, but uh, I, I end up doing a holding a camera sometimes, mm-hmm. getting a shot here and there, yeah. <laughs> carrying stuff. It, it's also like mm-hmm. physically yeah. taxing. Um, You're just it's like, cool that you kind of got to do like both out there though, because yeah. like yeah. in the PA role, you're playing a smart a small part on a yeah. larger. You know, a smaller peg in a larger right, wheel, right. cog, what cog wheel? You know what yes. I'm trying to say. <laughs> that scene versus like in the center scene wheel. apartment. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, yeah. you're you like it. playing a bigger role in a smaller yeah. production. So oh, it's for sure. Like yeah, bigger. definitely. If I had to pick which one I preferred, obviously, like it was the the set dressing and like having kind of like own department to head up and oversee mm-hmm. and stuff. But um, again, same thing with like just having that good attitude, whether you're on set as the PA, just trying not to get yelled at, you know, (laughs) try not to have anything be your fault. Um, or, you know, you're actually being able to create a beautiful scene, you know, you just show up, you have the good attitude and you just, you know, you do the work and, um, yeah, that was, there was a lot of fun days as a, as a PA too. And like lots of good connections. And yeah. Yeah. Um, are you looking into the next years? What are you hoping to do more of? Yeah. Um, so it's all, you know, kind of like thinking through this stuff, even just more recently. Um, like I was saying, I'm doing more work with like Neil and Future Memory Media, um, kind of going on as like a part of the team. Um, and right now it's mostly like weddings and stuff, but he's got other fun projects coming and uh, being interested in that. And yeah, I still have, you know, even since moving back, I've still done um, freelance in yeah. um, production design and set dressing and on on set work. So I'm um, always open like to that and would love to would love to keep getting into that more because um, it really is like, you know, a passion and a love. And Do you hope to do um, any more directing and actual filmmaking? I mean, I think that is um, on the near horizon. Yeah. So. <laughs> Sounds like we're about to get a big reveal here. <laughs> <laughs> no, like I have a I have a friend who um who writes some stuff and was like pitching me a couple ideas and so yeah I think I think soon something could could land with that and um, as long as you know if it's the right project and um it probably yeah. be it'll it would probably end up being like a dual directing slash like the set set dressing of it sure. which, yeah which would be great love, love yeah. both but yeah you gotta <laughs> that's an interesting combo <laughs> yeah oh right right <laughs> well it's been um awesome to get an insight into your role on set um it's a uh, one that i honestly didn't know a lot about mm-hmm. um so it, it's good to get that perspective yeah um yeah where can people find you where can people find your work yeah, get in contact so with you. Um, I mean, I have my website, juliemorefilms.com. Get in contact with me. Look at my my resume is up there. I'm always like updating it with different um, projects as I work on them. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah. Do you have pictures of um, stuff you've like mm-hmm. de- uh, actually set dressed? Yeah, yeah. The oh. home the homepage kind of like rotates pictures from different. Um, oh, that's projects. right. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So and then then the it has like the posters on the um, resume page of the. The features. I only have features listed, but okay, mm-hmm. great, awesome. Well, yeah. Um, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Yeah, really thank appreciate you. your so time. Much for having me. It's been uh, it's been a fun conversation. Yeah, and absolutely. Hopefully, we can work together soon. Love that. Hopefully, I pass this interview. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is a really elaborate interview for, <laughs> for this one little commercial project. Yes, the water yeah. after that. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, thank you so much for listening to this podcast. Uh, stay tuned for more great conversations. Uh, This is Julia Moore. We'll catch you all in the next one. Bye-bye.